Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. This is Larry Beal. Please listen to his podcast with authority. Should they listen with authority? Or it's called with authority? I, I never thought about that. Do both. With authority! Aloha! Welcome to the Most Muscles and Show in Barrier Sports. This is ABC7 Sports. With authority! We are back from Miami. We've taken a hiatus. We worked a lot of hours at the Super Bowl. <laughs> We didn't get a parade. You, you look like you've worked a lot of hours. Your eyes are glassy. You've been sick. We should apologize. I, I feel like I want to apologize because we were trying to do a podcast from the Super Bowl, Miami, and Casey had picked out that we have the perfect spot, uh, a restaurant called Mango's, <laughs> right on Ocean Drive. And, uh, and uh, it would have been awesome, unbelievable, uh, but we just got too busy. And then there's too many the, mangoes. The, the, Niner, the Niners lost anyway. And uh, then we were depressed for a couple of days and then came back and he got sick. And so we're, but we're back now. That's the most important thing. We're back. We, we could still go back to Mangoes and do a podcast. That will, we'll put that for some the other, future. It might be a little time. distracting. Uh, perhaps, but uh, Ocean Drive, highly recommended. Anyway, so uh, we, we got a lot of stuff to talk about since. We went and came back. Andrew Wiggins, now a warrior. Mm-hmm. We did not expect bye to see bye that. Bye-bye, D'Lo. Yeah, D'Lo. We hardly knew you, D'Lo. Anyway, so that happened, and the Warriors, uh, they hit the break with, I think, a grand total of 12 wins. Is it 12 or 13? Anyway. Doesn't matter. I lost my notes. No. But, um, so we'll, we'll talk Warriors, but I think the most important thing to touch on right off the top is spring training is here, and there's just this cloud hanging over everybody because of the sign-stealing scandal. And the new report out that it wasn't just the A's who had filed a protest about what was going on with the Astros. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fastball, by the way. Curve. Anyway, yeah. Um, 10 to 12 teams reportedly went to the commissioner's office and said, Hey, we know this is going on. And you know what they did? Nothing! Zippo! Zilch, nada. And now, baseball has to look like, okay, we're cracking down on all these people. So managers fired. You had three managers uh, dumped. And uh, the accusing finger of blame being pointed by a number of people at Carlos Beltran. And the, the Astros open spring training, but are huddled for won't hours. Won't talk to they anybody. Won't, talk. won't let they're, any media they're, in. They're, they're going to talk. That in is the, unprecedented. In, in the next few days. So the whole thing is just bizarre. I saw Tim Kirkchin on ESPN saying he, he's covered spring training for 40 years, <laughs> and he's never experienced anything like this. Well, yeah, because usually spring training is when hope springs eternal. Yes. Everybody's records are even. Everything is new and different. You kind of wash away the past. You usher in the future. And the Astros still have this whole thing looming oh, over man. them. And the whole sport does because, frankly, Commissioner Manfred did nothing to really, truly address this problem. There's still much more coming out. They left all of this to hang on Mike Fires, who was yeah. the one that finally was like, Enough! And it's crazy that this was reported by so many people, and then it came down to Mike Fires being the one that had to put his neck on the line to get this thing to stop. It, Everyone knew it was going on. It's an unfortunate situation for him to be Absolutely. in. Absolutely. you got people on, on both ends of this saying, well, this should have stayed within the clubhouse. But there were so many people upset about it within baseball. I'm surprised it actually stayed quiet for this long. It took years for this to come out. So who knows how it will actually impact the regular season in Major League Baseball. We do have some win totals to break down and and maybe a flashback yes. to last year's double meatball sandwich <laughs> crusher that I endured. Yeah. But uh, I think your A's are going to be looking pretty good. I think that is a certainty. I know that right now the Vegas win total for the A's is 89 and a half. 89. Last over, year, we over, told you take the over, over free money on the A's win total. They won 97 games back-to-back years. So... I know that we could look at this and say the A's are projected for 89 and a half. The Giants are projected for 70. That's a 19 and a half point spread. Last year I gave you 17 on the meatball bet and still you won. No, you gave me 15. 15, okay. <laughs> wow. 15, whatever. Whatever it was, it didn't even matter. I won easy. Wait, lying? You're I'm not lying giving on the you. podcast? <laughs> Just, wow. I misremembered. <laughs> okay. I misremembered. Roger Clemens here. I did, I did a Clemens and a Palmero doing the finger yeah. shake. So, all right. Last year, the bet was I took the Giants, you took the A's. Yes. You gave me 15 wins, and the loser had to eat two gigantic meatball subs at the same time with Joey Chestnut watching and laughing. So now Vegas says 
the spread is 19 and a half. You want to just give me an even 20 no, wins? Because I want to take this a completely different direction. Are uh, you ready I, for this, Larry Beal? Well, I, I don't have a choice. Again, the A's have won 97 games each of the last two years. I don't want to throw too many numbers okay. out there. The Giants, the last three years, 98 losses, 89 losses, 85 losses. Okay. Right now, the A's are projected to win 89 and a half. Yeah. The Giants are projected to lose 92 games. So Ooh. I ask you this. Will the A's win more games this season, 2020, than the Giants will lose? Again, the Vegas win totals right now, A's, 89 and a half wins, Giants, 92 losses. All right. So right now, Vegas says yes, the Giants are going to lose more games than the A's win. I think that's an interesting wrinkle that we could take on this. Okay, so so Vegas is saying that the A's are going to go 90 and 72. Okay, so if you, if you I mean, 89 and a half, you yeah. can't win half a game. So that's 162. So the question to me is, do I believe... <laughs> That the Giants will win 72 or more games? Yes, and they're projected for 70. So do you believe the number or do you not like the number? I would go under on Giants at 72. So you're not going to take this bet? Not as it's presently structured, I know. <laughs> Unless we can renegotiate. How about I'll take the A's and you take the Giants? No, absolutely would not. You, oh, no, that I, cuts to the whole core of this bet in the first well, place. Well, it seems like... Uh, this is a negotiation See, that's Larry's, going nowhere. <laughs> I just he's I, chickening out on the meatballs. Uh, well, I didn't. You, you snuck up on me with a bet. I, I asked think it's you, fair. When we were preparing for this, you wouldn't tell me. What I you wouldn't were, tell him the yeah, numbers. He, he was like just. Off I had the, the master plan. He was plan. in the corner, and I was like, "What are you working on?" He goes, "Let's <laughs> just wait till we record it, and then we'll uh, we'll you'll see what I'm well, doing." Well, let's just do this then, it's because people don't like math, and we can get together and figure it all out, and we'll come back with a real bet. But the reason I like the A's to easily hit that 89 and a half over is you brought it oh, up a while on. ago, yeah. but I mean, I used to always sit there and hammer you with wait for AJ puck. Yes. Wait for Jesus Lazardo. Wait for Sean Murphy. All these guys, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. They're going to happen. They're all here and they're all ready to go from the start. And now they all have big league experience. And so I think the A's coming into this year are already far better than they were entering last season. And you take that and you add in the fact that the Astros can't effectively cheat anymore, or maybe they won't be able to cheat as much, I think the A's are going to win a lot more games. Well, they won 97 in each of the past two years. So give me, yeah, give and me the over year, on that 89 and a half. Easy. It was a, a patchwork starting rotation. I mean, you had relics from the past they were trotting out. And we kept saying, come on, Jesus, Lizardo. Yeah, where, where's Lizardo? Come on, AJ Puck. So, yeah, I think 89 and a half barring a catastrophe. I mean, you look at the bullpen and you wonder, how are you getting to Liam Hendricks mm -hmm. as your closer? And there's some questions there, but otherwise it seems like they have a surplus of offense. Yeah. And now with the pitching, the starting pitching at least, looking so much better than it has in each of the past two years. I don't know how, I, I, I mean, it would be hard for me to see. I guess if, if guys got hurt, they wouldn't be able which to they hit, always do which which know. they always do but um, the A's are actually built with a lot of depth that's something that we always admire about the A's outfield for example it just seems like they have outfielders on outfielders on outfielders to plug in so yeah I mean I think really the only question mark about the team right now maybe second base does Franklin Barreto finally get his chance right. to not be a 4A player and really run with his second base job I know they keep talking about tinkering and adding someone there yeah. but I don't see a major glaring weakness for the A's. The Giants, on the other hand, well, I, I would I would set the number probably higher for the A's if I was Vegas. I'd probably mm -hmm. go 92 or 93 wins. Yeah. Um, but you want to talk about outfield depth? How about this? Alex Dickerson, Mike Yastrzemski, Stephen Duggar, Hunter Pence, Pence, Jalen Davis. Hunter Pence is back, baby. Drinking that strong coffee, taking his scooter to the Come park every day. Comeback player of the year, AL. He was good with Texas last year. But he was in Texas. I know he rebuilt his swing. I know he had a great year. He was in Texas, though. He's coming back to Oracle Park now. The fences are moved in, though. Yeah. That might help. I hate her in the house. That might Case help. Brad. I like Hunter Pence. You know, I like him, I too. I think he's one of the best human beings in all he's, of Major League Baseball. And the fans love him, too. Yeah. You look at the rest of the Giants here. Hey, we got... You know, Brandon Belt is back at first hey, base. Move in the going fences. Move in the fences. Move in a little might, more. I think he, that'll help. It will help. <laughs> uh, you're so 
cruel to the Giants. Uh, uh, you got Brandon Crawford again. Um, and uh, we'll see what they do at second base, whether Dubon uh, earns the starting nod Can there. Can I pause you real quick? Sure. You said I'm cruel to the Giants. Here are their loss totals the last three years. 98, 89, 85. I, but that's... They're progressing. Can't you see a clear progression there? <laughs> so that means it's only getting better. From it's terrible only... to pretty bad and still rebuilding. And they needed to rebuild. We, so uh, let's go. Uh, yeah. All right. Anyways. Uh, the rotation, Johnny Cueto back from, back from Tommy, Tommy John Johnny. surgery. And he says his arm it feels like a baby. Like he's brand, <laughs> like he's brand new. <laughs> like he's brand new. A baby arm. A baby arm. That's he's great. got a baby's arm. And you got Samarja. And after that, it's, I, I don't know. I mean, you got Webb, you got Beatty, you got Anderson, you got Rodriguez. We got a Derek Rodriguez bobblehead in the sports department. We do. In the office. If you tweet us that you want that Derek Rodriguez bobblehead, after listening and or watching this podcast on YouTube, I will send it to you. That's we should. That's how I'll we should do it. I'll send it directly this is to kind you. Kind of like we're almost like Amazon. Yeah. At the, at the, one day delivery. We'll mm-hmm. promise one day. I'll get it to you. Anyway, the bigger question beyond the rotation is the bullpen. Yeah. Because they traded away most of the bullpen at the deadline last year. Why are you laughing again? Why? Because why? Because when you... I think of the bullpen, I think of this story. Will Smith. One day. I was driving to work, and I was listening to the Giants game on the radio, and they ran down the list of everybody who had pitched so far in the game and, like, what their performance was. And I remember thinking, I haven't heard of any of these people. (laughs) (laughs) I watch, like, almost every Giants game. (laughs) It's like a who's who. Who are these guys? Come on. Don't be mocking Sam Coonrod. (laughs) He throws like 100. He throws hard. He throws like 100. I'll give him that. So you got, you know, Watson and Gott. Anderson might might end up being your closer. I I don't know how many games, how many leads there are going to be to protect. So the Giants, the off season was not what many people were hoping for. But that's not what the point was, anyways. So like, I don't want it to seem like I'm just flat out knocking the Giants. They're not supposed to be good this year. They're supposed well, to be I think, rebuilding. I think they're going to accomplish and, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but the thing is, is this is what they need to do. You've got to tear it down tear and it rebuild. Down but rebuild. sometimes I worry that they don't tear it down enough. Oh, I, I think they're there. I think they're there. So well, that's they, the question You're stuck for me. with some of these contracts, yeah. like Longoria and Bell. And you bring in Pence. I honestly think that was a PR move, as much as everyone loves Hunter Pence. Sure, he's better than your other options, but was that really a move that was for the betterment of the actual Giants' future? Well... From the standpoint sure. of all these young guys having a veteran presence, he's a great guy to have I, yeah, around. No, I think I mean in terms of work ethic, I, I don't know how productive he's going to be. I don't even know how many at bats he's going to get. How much time is he going to see if the goal is to try to develop guys like Jalen Davis? Mm-hmm. I mean, see, that's my point. But want to develop guys? You don't well, want guys in the way like Belt and Pence and Crawford and all these guys. All right. Well, but you, you know, can't get rid of those guys. Either. Farhan, the contracts make it impossible to move. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, if the Dodgers just keep adding more guys, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, if they don't win this year, I, I don't know. I, I well, mean, you're I getting, mean, they don't have the Astros to bang trash well, cans yeah. and ruin their season again. I don't know. I think they'll be good. And shout out to Alyssa Knack and really cool, really cool that the Giants brought on the first full-time female coach in baseball. One of the I interesting awesome. stories this year will be how the entire coaching staff and only Ron Wotus is left – from the previous staff, which I think if you weren't going to give him the the skipper's job, to have him there as kind of the go-between with Gabe Kapler while while Kapler is benching 350 or whatever he's and doing in the waiter room. sunning his nether yeah. regions. <laughs> <laughs> which he did write a blog about yeah, on his own website. Apparently you very, can look that up. Very important uh, part of um, managing baseball. Anyway, uh, it's... It, who knows what this coaching staff is going to do because it's it's young, it's analytics driven, and the Giants have never gone down that road. So these are we'll all say, good things. I think these are all. It'll good be things interesting. It'll be interesting. If um, nothing this else. season isn't going to be fun, but they're doing things that are going to trend them in the right direction. Right. I think that's for sure. I didn't even think we were going to talk about baseball this long, but we did. Apologies. Well, you know, let's move on. Sorry. So let's talk Warriors because uh, whew, I <laughs> <laughs> we actually peel back the curtain. We were going to do a podcast with Steve Kerr 
Right. The Super Bowl happened. We were going to try to fit it in. It just got too crazy. We'll still do that coming up. But thank well, goodness we didn't do it because none of it would be well, relevant we, anymore had we done it. None of the players are left. Everyone's on the team. gone. Well, not everybody. I mean, you know, you, Steph and Clay, but they're not. They're not playing. Steph still. They're talking about a March return, but everything has been overturned mm-hmm. with uh, guys like Alec Burks and Glenn Robinson the third being shipped out. Jacob Evans shipped out. Amari Spellman shipped out. They they dove under the luxury tax to to avoid being in the repeater mode, which I totally understand. And now you got a new toy in Andrew Wiggins, who look when you're the number one pick in the NBA draft, as he was, the expectations are super high. Tremendous, yeah. He went into a dysfunctional situation in Minnesota, where the coaches were coming and going, and no stability. And I know we have a small sample size of, of Wiggins so far, but what I'm seeing right now, I'm excited about. Yeah, I agree. Because I talked to a couple of people that know Andrew Wiggins well and covered him and followed him when he was a Timberwolf. Mm-hmm. And I said, what do you think the odds are that the Warriors' culture and being around Steph and Clay and those guys can resuscitate him and bring out the natural talent that he has. And I got very negative responses in return. Hmm. So uh, what I'm seeing, like, if I had no knowledge of who Andrew Wiggins was before this, like, we both dropped in from other planets, and I looked at him for the first time, like, he's hustling. He's blocking shots. He's trying to defend. The issue with him is never athleticism. It's like, I mean, they called him Maple Jordan, like the, the uh, Canadian <laughs> version of Michael Jordan. It is a great name. But you have to live up to that. If yeah. you're, you're going to carry around Maple Jordan. Yeah, that and you, the first overall pick. You status. better be dunking on yeah. fools and sticking your tongue out. So, <laughs> or one of the two, anyway. Um, but I'm impressed with just the desire that he's showing because that has been the big knock it's like he can go out and get you 35 on any given night or he might get you seven points and two rebounds and not really be engaged even without Steph and clay and you know the best of the best the warriors can trot out there i'm seeing a guy who's trying Mm -hmm. and he's he's averaging over 20 something points per game the rebounding totals i mean i wish they were a little bit higher he's not one of those guys is going to clean the glass for you. And he's kind of slender in terms of his build. But I just, if, if you, like Steve Kerr said, we don't need him to be our superstar. We have Steph and Clay and Draymond to lock it down. He just has to fit, just fit in the puzzle. And that's just going to be the big difference. Yeah. That's going to be the big difference because he's not going to be expected to be the guy to carry you. And I think that, you know, in looking at Wiggins, I actually check this out because, you know, I thought that, it was interesting that when they got rid of D'Angelo Russell, traded him away to the Timberwolves, one of the things that people talked about was he missed 19 games this season. Yeah. He's a young guy. He missed 19 games. Want to hear how many games Wiggins has missed in his entire career? Oh, he hardly misses games. 17 games in and his that's whole in, career. That's six years in, right? That's dating back from the 2014-15 yeah. season. Yeah. So you're looking at a guy who is there. Frankly, D'Angelo Russell wasn't. And... I love the quote from Steve Kerr because, you know, when they got him, everyone was kind of like, I don't know. I mean, with Steph, kind of redundant, doesn't make a lot of sense. And Kerr (laughs) said after the trade, to be perfectly blunt, the fit was questionable when we signed him. So I think the fit for Wiggins, much better. Well, he's never going to be Kevin Durant, but you needed somebody at the small forward position that can that can score, mm-hmm. that that can score and defend a little bit. I, I like the first game that we saw him. He, he took on the challenge of guarding LeBron. And so I'm enthused more than I was with the notion that I never believed that they're going to run like a three-guard offense with D'Lo and Steph and Clay. That made no sense. And I don't think internally, despite what the Warriors were saying, I think their intent all along was, and we've talked about this before, is, you never let an asset get away for nothing. So when Durant left, they knew they might have a chance to acquire D'Angelo Russell. They paid him that max contract, which was like, whoa, what are you guys doing? But then you can flip that asset for something else. And the Timberwolves had been dying for well, D'Angelo yeah. Russell, and they had to have known that going in. Right. So, 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 okay, now the asset is Wiggins, and 
you are getting a lightly protected Minnesota draft pick next year. If it's not top three, the Warriors get that pick. I think the Timberwolves are going to be terrible because they – Carl Anthony Towns doesn't guard anybody. Mm-hmm. Russell doesn't guard anybody. Nope. They're they're going to be a lottery team again. I don't see them dramatically turning it around. So rather than having uh, the Warriors when well, when they were going to the finals every year, low picks that netted you guys like Jacob Evans who who couldn't really contribute, you're going to get this year. You're certainly going to get a, high, a very high pick, if not the top pick. You might get the top pick. We'll Obi Toppin, Obi Toppin, Obi Toppin from Dayton. Google him. I love Obi Toppin. Do we have an OB Toppin bobblehead we can give away? Maybe at some point we will. But <laughs> um, anyway, I'm a huge OB Toppin fan. Well, that's, again, for another podcast. We're going down like eight lanes at once I here. know who else Whoa. you're a huge fan of. Tua. Tua! Tua. My man! Tua. Tango Bailoa! <laughs> and Nala. Nala, yeah. Yeah, we saw him. That's his dad. His dad. You want, can I tell you a quick Tua story before the, the Tua story we're gonna, everybody's going to hear? Yeah, because we're going to get into our Super Bowl thoughts real quick, but also we're going to have a whole one-on-one interview with both Tua and his father in yeah. mere moments. Did, did we just end the Warriors segment there? Yes. We did. Oh, you t- We you already t- did it. Okay, all right, never mind. Uh, I, I was going to have one more last uh, Warriors thing. Nope. Le- <laughs> <laughs> He, he controls the editing, so even I say it, he can cut it out. But last year at this time, I yeah. was heading to Charlotte for the All-Star game. Two years ago, the Warriors had four All-Stars, Steph, Clay, KD, and Draymond. This year they have zero All-Stars, zero All-Stars. and Eric Paschal is in the Rising Stars Challenge game. That's that's where we are right and now. And that's why you are not headed that's to the I'm NBA All-Star game in, right Chica- now. in Chicago, where it's like an ice storm happening. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm not... Unhappy that I'm missing that. So let me get uh, to a story from uh, a few years ago. Uh, Alabama's playing in the national championship game. They're losing. Tua, at this point, is an unheralded, unknown backup. And Jalen Hurts is the quarterback, and he can't pass the ball. And I'm just (laughs) screaming at the TV, Tua can throw! Tua can throw! In fact, if you check my Twitter account from then, (laughs) that's what I tweeted. That's what Tua can throw. He came in, started throwing bombs. I remember that, yeah. Alabama wins. The legend of Tua begins. And uh, here we are now where he is going to be a first-round draft pick, but he had the hip injury late in the year for the Crimson Tide. And so there's a lot of questions about his overall health. But just this week, uh, the doctors came out and said his hip is healing about as well as they could expect. And so it looks like two is going to throw before the combine and people will get to see us. Mm-hmm. Well, you'll hear the interview in just a few seconds. I ask him, you know, how he's feeling. And he's like, well, I throw with my arm, not with my hip. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> so, so that's a, yeah, that's, he's very emphatic about that. He, he was. He was. <laughs> yes. So should we, without further ado, let's hear from Tua Tango Vailoa, the pride of the 808 and his dad, Nalu. All right, here with Tua Tango Vailoa. So this is your first Super Bowl experience. How's it been for you? Uh, It's been really good. It's been a blessing to be able to be here, so it's been fun. I'll ask you the same question a thousand other people have asked you already this week. How's your health? Uh, It's good. You know, I think what we're really looking forward to is the CT scan on the 10th of February and then a follow-up with the MRI, you know, and depending on how that goes, then, you know, we're either going to get aggressive or, you know, just still got to lay off. When do you think you'll be able to throw, or is it all really dependent upon the MRI? Well, I've been throwing. <laughs> I've been throwing, you know. My arm's not broken, <laughs> so I, I, I've been throwing, you know. Um, as far as movement and whatnot, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm able to walk fine. It's just, you know, we just want to be careful, you know. We want to be extra cautious about the injury, um, so, yeah. Your parents told me they were driving around Miami wondering, what would it be like if we lived here and Tua was a dolphin? Well, I mean, I, I'd be I'd be honored. You know, I'd be privileged to, to play for for a city you know like this. Um, I mean, they really love their football out here and they really love their team. Um, you know, but whatever team decides to, to, to draft me, I mean, I'd I'd be grateful as well. Last one. Do you really have any idea how much you mean to the state of Hawaii? I mean, you know, I think I think. 
not just me, but I think a lot of people that make it big, um, you know, coming out of Hawaii, I mean, I think they're all important, you know, and you know, when one makes it big, it's like everyone makes it big, you know, everyone's so supportive of one another, so I, I mean, it's, it's, it's just awesome to be, be in that category. I know you've been driving around Miami a little bit thinking, I wonder if two is going to be a dolphin. <laughs> God, I'm glad I'm not driving. I mean, we've been catching the Uber, and uh, they know a lot about this place. The traffic's impossible. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The traffic has been out of this world. I mean, I thought Hawaii traffic was bad. This traffic is worse, you know. But uh, with Miami, I mean, it's always a blessing. Always a blessing. Regardless of where he goes, it's just a blessing that he's going to be playing at that level or even playing for a team that's at that level. So, You've gone through a lot in the past few months with the season, then the injury, and then all the questions. How do you feel now about heading into the combine, the draft, all of that? Oh, we feel great. I mean, you know, I, I think it was a good thing, you know, that he has gone through that. And he has gone through it at, at the collegiate level, you know, to where now he understands through his injuries and what he goes through, and he understands now how to kind of take care of himself at the next level, you know, I, I think, it's been a blessing from God with what he's going through. I mean, allowed him to heal. I mean, with his hip, everything is just so amazing. He's healing so fast, you know, but at the same time, you know, we're allowing the doctors to do their thing, you know, and uh, once they give the, the go ahead and the go, we're back to, to normal again. You know what I'm saying? It's all about grinding and working. Sure. Well, I got to tell you, I got two daughters. They're in their 20s. I don't know how you done this but you ought to write a parenting book because he's as close to perfect as you can as you can have oh man thank you thank you Larry I know you've been a legend back home with uh with Hawaii and stuff but you know parenting this there's no book for parenting you know what I'm saying we've learned I've learned from my parents my parents have learned from their parents you know we both raised you know I mean my wife was raised differently I was raised differently but, you know, just putting those two things together, you know, that's the product. You know, you got two and my kids, and, but we try. You know, I think the, the thing with raising kids is just our faith and allowing God to guide us through and, you know, with how we raise our kids. I'm so happy for you. So special thanks to Tua and his dad and Lee Steinberg, who was representing him, and I've known Lee for decades, and so we're all at this party, and uh, that was a good time. And for me personally, the funniest part was because I left Hawaii many years ago, and Tua is like 20, 21 years old, so yeah. he just he has no idea, you know, like who are you? But his dad used to watch me on TV in Hawaii, so his dad was excited to meet me and was trying to convince Tua, like, Tua, 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 look who's here. It was, it was a funny moment because Tua's looking like, who, who's this dude, this guy? Anyway, so I'm, I'm so excited, and there's the chance that the Dolphins, with the fifth pick in the draft, where we just were, Miami, mm. Mangoes <laughs> that Tua could end up being drafted yes. by the Dolphins, who certainly need a quarterback. It's criminal that there's not an XFL team named the Miami Mangoes. <laughs> That's side could, note. Could be it. No, but that was cool. Actually, you know, when we went to the Lee Steinberg party, and shout out to Lee, I will be speaking at his career conference coming up in a few months, um, which I've done two years in a row now, I guess. Great guy. Um, when we went there, um, I thought it was really cool just because we all did so much the week of the Super Bowl and the game itself almost seemed like it was never going to happen because there's so much going on. And we all kind of had our own special, like, this was my favorite moment of the Super Bowl. I think it was really cool to see you talk to Tua and his dad and just kind of connect the way you did. And I know for sure that was your favorite yeah. moment of Super Bowl week. Well, you know, the funny thing in, in Hawaii is the island is so small. So his high school coach... I was really good friends and still are good friends with, with the coaches that mm -hmm. coached him up. And the same guys that coached Marcus Mariota and so many other players from Hawaii. And so th there's all these connections, and it's just a, it's a cool feeling. And anytime well, – DeForest Buckner is another one, yeah. you know, uh, who, who came out of Hawaii. And uh, there's just a lot of pride. So I was excited to, to meet them, and uh, I'm really pumped that he's 
apparently healthy, and I can't wait to see him play in an NFL uniform. So I'll rapid fire my favorite moments of Super Bowl week, okay. uh, aside from Mangos. Actually, I never even went there. You, you did guys, not go. You guys shared the story yeah. of walking. <laughs> they literally walked past it and were like, this is the coolest place ever. Yes. Uh, it's a restaurant, by the way. Yeah. Um, so one uh, I thought was really cool. I saw Snoop Dogg and Lil Jon in a warehouse, the same exact place the Steinberg party was hours later, <laughs> that was so randomly bizarre. enough. Um, and it was raining when we went, so there was, like, nobody in the place. It was just Snoop Dogg and me. It was almost your private yeah, concert. We had, it's like we basically had a private concert. It was crazy. Uh, two, I'm a huge fan of the show Mayans FX, which is the spinoff of Sons of Anarchy, my favorite show of all time. And I saw two of the star actors, J.D. Pardo and uh, Edward J. Olmos, an Oscar winner, and I was like, oh, my God, it's the guys from Mayans. And so I started talking to their handler, um, and he pointed out that Disney – bought FX, so we're all in the family, gave me a one-on-two interview with those guys. For me personally, that was a geek-out type moment, kind of like you interviewing Tua. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, you know, the coolest thing that I think happened over the week is terrible that the 49ers lost, but, you know, I was rushing through the hallways trying to get down on the field when the game ended, all the emotions were crazy, and I got a text message from my wife, and it was a picture that my daughter Harper drew of Katie Sowers. And it was just so cute that, like, in the midst of all the crazy of the Super Bowl, that a six-year-old girl saw her and was inspired enough by her to draw that picture. So when we were flying home the next day, Monday after the Super Bowl, I just tweeted the picture to Katie Sowers, and I just said, you know, the Niners lost, but this is a win for humanity. And she retweeted it, said this, and, and had an inspiring message. And I thought it was so cool that a random six-year-old girl back home in Livermore was able to kind of brighten her day after what was surely a crushing defeat for her and the 49ers. I thought it was a really nice moment, and it seemed to really have a nice effect on her too. So that, to me, was just amazing. I think all of us felt good about that when – I think we were in the airport. We were JFK. Yeah, we landed in New York from Miami. Yeah, which is the, the preferred <laughs> path. Yes, when Miami, you're in New York, <laughs> San Francisco. Yeah, that's, that's the way you want to go <laughs> if you're booking that in the future. But – when we looked at our phones and saw, wow, Katie Sowers saw your daughter's picture. And then it went like crazy and then, viral. Yeah, and uh, and that it was, was funny. It's we're in a very connected world. It was and, a touching moment. Yeah, I think. it was really good. So that highlighted Super Bowl week for me, and it really was something that happened at the end and after Super Bowl week. Yeah. All right. Now we're back. Yeah. Guests potentially coming up include Steve Kerr <laughs> yes, uh, <I'm> glad <laughs> and then whoever else we happen to grab yes, along the we're, way. We're going and giveaways, <laughs> which have been threatening. Yeah, Derek Rodriguez bobblehead, George Kittle yes, bobblehead. I, I think we, we, we've got better than that. I have in my desk a Stephen Curry oh my goodness, we still all-star have... jersey that I will give to one of you. Yeah. But let's wait till Steph comes back. Okay, so March. March. In March. Keep listening to March. Every episode. Subscribe, rate, review. All of them. Subscribe, rate, five stars. You can comment if you want, but the five stars is a big thing. Is it a big thing? We'll take the five stars. Yeah. Does and that mean we're good? Yeah, I mean, you, you can lie. It's just a thing. You just click it. It doesn't even matter if you really think <laughs> so, we deserve So even stars. if you think just we're... Just hit the five uh, and if, move if on. It think, takes two if seconds. If you think we're like two and a half stars, but they, it's kind of like... Great on what, a curve. You're like your Uber driver. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, you know... I'll come on your podcast and give it one star if you don't give me five. Give us five, I'll give you five. Everyone gets five. It's okay. how Uber works. You, it sounds, you rate the driver, the driver rates the passenger. It sounds like you're threatening them. Uh, yes, <laughs> it might be. Subscribe! I'm going to come on your Subscribe! podcast. I'm gonna... If you don't have a podcast, I'll make you a podcast. Then I'll give it one star. This is all hostile. Right. This is, I've been sick all week. Very, very upsetting. I may not be back yet. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're on YouTube, we're on Kids. iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're on SoundCloud, we're on Google Play, we're on the internet. Kids, don't, everywhere. Don't mix your cold medicines. That's that's my tip after no, listening to this. No, mix don't them. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the outcome. Shall we say aloha? <laughs> With authority.